So I want to do a quick video on root insurance and try and answer the question for us, especially if you're a lemonade investor, should you buy root insurance? And also, how do they compare to lemonade? I'm not a root expert, but I have looked into them in the past. So I have some knowledge of them. It's not going to be perfect knowledge, definitely not the same level, near the same level of depth that I've looked at Lemonade. So if there's anything you are a root, big time root investor, you're watching this and you think I'm getting something wrong, please let us know in the comments down below. I've also had some discussions on Twitter with uh, his name's Ali. I'll, you can find him on Twitter there. Uh, about Root in the past. I know he's a major Root investor. He's also um, a very bullish on Lemonade as well. But at this time, I know he's very concentrated on Root, especially for the short term. And I think Root could be a great investment, especially looking at the shorter term. Okay. They are approaching profitability. Management has said they're, they're going to be profitable soon. I think it's in the next year or so that they're expecting to be profitable. On adjusted EBITDA basis, they're basically at uh, break even this last quarter in Q4. And get this, even after this massive post-earning surge in the stock price, they still have a market cap of about $250 million. $250 million, so pretty small, especially when you compare it to, hey, they have Inforce premiums of $973 million. They have a loss ratio of about 70%. So you add that up, a lot of insurers typically, you know, really ballpark could be priced at kind of one times what their premiums are. And they're, they're priced approximately a quarter of what their premiums are, even after this massive surge in the stock price. So really, they have been priced for going bankrupt. I know that the COVID times were really, really difficult for them, uh, especially because you're because Root, if you don't know anything about them, they're primarily car insurance company, primarily a car insurance company. And the one thing I also understand about them is they are direct to consumer, but they also, a major uh, point for them is that they want to be the sort of embedded insurance that if you're, they have these key partnerships, for example, they have a key partnership with Carvana. So if you're buying a car through Carvana, right within 30 seconds, hey, part of that process you click a few buttons and then you get your car insurance and that's provided through Root. So that's kind of a major thing for them, at least my discussions with Ali, is talking about, hey, they want to be an embedded insurer that's, that, that's sort of their acquisition channel. They get there, a lot of their their customers through those channels. And of course, if you think COVID back to then, there's so much uncertainty in market, probably so much uncertainty in car sales, so much uncertainty in how much people are even traveling, really, really hard times for the company, so much uncertainty for a startup sort of insure tech anyways. So the, the stock was insanely low. Even still though, you could argue even after the surge, is it still like ridiculously low? Is there a potential just to, just to be where they should be priced? Should they be three, four times the price? You know, there, I think there's a good argument to be made that in that sort of value in them, right? Because again, if they're priced even at just one times IFP, that means they should be around the one billion dollar mark. And it, and if you think about that, how do, where does, where are you gonna get that figure from? Say in one or two years, they could generate a five percent profit on a billion dollars in premium. That would be a fifty million dollar profit. And you say say you give that a PE of ten, well, that gives a five hundred million dollar market cap, so double of where they are currently. Or if they even get a PE that's a little more generous, a twenty, that gives a one billion dollar market cap, or roughly, you know, where one times the premium. So definitely argue could they double, triple, quadruple from where they are even post earning surge. And but I do think think there's that sort of shorter term potential for the stock just to be corrected in its valuation. But how does it compare to Lemonade? See, I like Lemonade way, way more long term. And a big reason is I just don't, I just don't think having the single mono line sort of approach and really, I'm not really sold on that because you don't have control over the sort of whole customer life cycle and experience that Lemonade would have. And also, I feel like the embedded aspect is kind of a weak, in my mind, it's it's 
it's not a strong position to be going from long term. It could be could still generate could be a decent business approach, could be a decent small insurer that has some good partnerships, but in my mind it has some flaws. And Josh brought this up on the recent space. Let's have a listen to the question and concerns he had around embedded insurance. Can I just come back on the um, the embedded? So just for the audience, embedded insurance is where you have, uh, let's say you have a normal business. Let's say you have Walmart and in Walmart you have a product like a TV that you can buy. And embedded insurance is where a, a big insurance company um, like Allstate or whoever, one of the big insurance companies will come in as an insurer and they will sell um, an insurance product like let's say at the at the checkout. So when you're buying your TV, the person at the checkout will say, hey, while you're here, uh, there's a chance for you to just buy an insurance product or in the case that, you know, of Roots, um, apparently, you know, on Carvana at the point of sale of the car, you can go ahead and buy car insurance. And my pushback, Ali, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, my pushback is that um, that's actually not a great position to be in. So I work here for Context Alley. I work in the wholesale uh, slash reinsurance London market. And, you know, there are loads and loads of white label products out there. All the big brokers are trying to to place them. And it, I think it reduces the insurer to a capacity provider. So they're just bringing a commodity to the table, which is insurance capacity, and they're saying there's our capacity and no one knows that it's them selling the product and i think that really reduces their long-term value because ultimately what is to stop carvana or walmart or whoever the big distribution partner is to say hey you know what i want 20 percent now or i want 30 40 percent and that that front brand can always squeeze the commissions on the capacity provider and it just becomes a commodity squeezed business. Like what are your thoughts on that? Because that's the way I see embedded insurance. So generally my concern with embedded is exactly what Josh says. In my mind, hey, they don't really control their own destiny long term because if uh, for an Im embedded insurance product, the partner that's sort of the upfront customer facing company, in this case, maybe Carvana or Josh in his example, Walmart, they can really put the pressure <clears throat> on the insurance company to say, hey, we want to take more and more of your margin and really treat that sort of product as a commodity. And if I was in the shoes of that customer facing partner, say Walmart, sorry, say Carvana, that would be my take Could say, hey, we're the ones doing all the work. We're the ones who have the control, who have the brand, who people are actually using our product or coming to our store or buying cars through us. So you're all you are is an insurance provider and we could swap you out for any other insurance provider. Why wouldn't I do that and basically shop around to the market could get the most value for me versus the embedded insurer themselves. So that's sort of the main issue I have with that overall approach. I did actually mention these, it, they didn't get a chance to answer on the spaces. I think Ali left the space after this or was in and out a bit, but I did actually ask him directly what he thought about this. And he did convey, hey, Carvana actually is a major investor in Root. And so there's a very uh, mutual interest from them in Root also succeeding. So in that case, could be a really positive partnership for Root. And this is maybe a great example of an embedded system where, in a sense, the the people that are the customer facing, in, in this case, Carvana, the, the, that group, that entity, is also tied in with and incentivized for the success of Root. So it could work out well for them. Could be another good reason why, you know, maybe this is worth a look at Root, especially on the shorter term, if you think it's a great value play. But again, I think Lemonade has way, way more upside because they kind of they're controlling their own destiny and i love lemonades also that one of the big things about them is their focus on efficiency so they're really trying to build these hyper efficient systems that have incredible operating leverage and because of those systems they can then offer renter's insurance, pet insurance for really, really cheap, bring those customers in, still be profitable with those customers, and then grow into them into other product lines like the car insurance over time. To me, that's a way, way better acquisition strategy. It's much, much more defensible because 
it's really hard. It's really hard to build the multi-line product that's really, really good and slick and excellent and very, very good customer experience. And it's also hard to build systems that cut out all the fat and all the waste and make things as automated as you can, but still make customers delighted and really customer centric. Those things are really difficult to do and take, and it takes a really long time with Lemonade's approach because they're, they're planning, they're talking about like years, they're building this base of customers that are young. And then this slowly and gradually, this base of customers keeps growing, but also keeps aging and getting older. So it's really hard to do and takes a long time to do, which is why long term, I think Lemonade has a very, very defensible strategy and moat that they're slowly building. And another advantage too of Lemonade is they get trans they get a lot of visibility visibility and clarity into who a person is and what kind of person they are way sooner in their life than uh, and then can really decide, hey, this is a super responsible, super safe customer. We want to sell them home insurance. We want to sell them home insurance for their cabin. We want to sell them car insurance for their four vehicles, et cetera, et cetera. We want to really grow and bundle everything we can with this customer because they're an excellent, safe person. And they can really test the waters of those customers way sooner than versus approach like Roots where they kind of have... Uh, the funnel that the customers they're accepting is really just based on whatever their embedded partner pulls them in or whoever they potentially attract themselves. So it's, again, in my mind, the lemonade strategy of acquisition and then growing with those customers is way, way better long-term strategy. So to summarize everything that I'm saying, it, it's, it's hard to really compare these companies. I think they're quite, quite different, even from sort of an investment thesis. I think it's very, very different because in my mind, Lemonade has this huge, if they're successful, I think the upside's like massive, like 50x and beyond massive. That's really what I my feelings are on it. And that might take time. I think they're, pri they're priced higher, like their market cap, even at what it's currently at, is still higher than their Enforce Premium. But I think Lemonade's always going to sort of command a much higher multiple because they have people are going to sense this bigger sort of potential long term upside that's there. So in my mind, even if they are successful, they could command much higher multiples much sooner than people realize just because they have this long-term potential. But then companies like Root, the position it's in, where it's still one quarter, their market cap's still a quarter of what their premiums are, there's there's very good argument, I think, to be made, hey, this is a great short-term value play that could double, triple, quadruple in the next year. And uh, so it's an interesting play from that angle if you're thinking more about that shorter term horizon. That's at least how I view it. I'd love to hear what you think or if anything I got wrong, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, it's in the bag.